Hey everyone, this video is going to be split in two parts. The first one is going to be about showing you how to get started with this top-down click-to-move controller, which I just released. And the second one is going to be about going through together in the actual uh, inspector when we you know, look at the character controller and see all the options and settings we have available to us. Now, uh, the first part about getting started is not for people who want to use it with RPG Builder. This is for people who want to use it on its own and with maybe other frameworks or with your own system and gameplay, right? Uh, if you want to use it with RPG Builder, just before this video, I released one just for that. So make sure to watch this one instead. So let's go ahead and import. You import everything because it's, um, everything is needed and it's mostly code. As you can see, it was really quick to import. And we now have the blink controller and click to move um, folder. So now we can go uh, straight to the demo. So demo folder and demo scene, double click to open. And here already I can press play and uh, enjoy my new controller, right? So this is a very, very good base for any uh, click to move game. But just before that, uh, we have one thing to do. And this is setting up a layer. Or multiple but we will start with one um so the reason for that is because unity assets do not export the layers that i had for example me in my project when i publish this asset so you have to reproduce this on your own and uh all you have to do is click any game object go to layers add layer and here you can have any name you want in my case i'm going to call it workable and here i'm going to go back to environment and set the layer to workable and yes change children so what this is going to do is set the terrain and all the obstacles, which are those cubes here, um, to the workable layer, as you can see here. And now the last thing we need to do is select the player. So the player prefab here and set the layer to workable if it was not already. Maybe it was UI, default, whatever. Just make sure it's workable. And of course, you can have multiple of those. For example, you could have ground, you could have obstacles, you could have rocks, whatever. Just make sure that uh, if you want to be able to click on them and to move to them, then they should be under um, the ground layer list here. So that's it. Now we can go in game and enjoy the controller fully. So as you can see, I can hold um, the movement key to move, or I can, of course, click um, as, you know, as I want to move. We can rotate the camera. We can zoom in and out. We can even stand still and face or cursor. So this could be good for combat. And you see that it has some pretty nice uh, path handling, meaning that right now I'm clicking in this hole, right? Which is, of course, not allowed for a character to go in because it works with a nav mesh, etc. But as you can see, it is going to find a new optimal path for us to go to. So pretty cool. And like I just mentioned, um, when you will use it in your own custom scenes, your own world, which are going to be beautiful, I'm sure, you will have two things to make sure and to remember. So the first one is just like I told you, the layer. So make sure that your terrains and all the things you want to be able to work on are on a specific layer and that this layer is included in the ground layers. And second, you need to make sure that you bake the nav mesh. Here, as you can see, the blue area, if you're not familiar with Unity nav mesh, basically determine what our character is going to be able to um, move on. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, setup of the you know controller. Now you're ready to use it in your game and in your world. Now let's take a look at the um, components. So in the inspector and all the settings we have available, as you can see, it's quite a few. So I'm just going to collapse the other component and focus only on this one. Okay, so here we have a few references. Uh, the audio source is not required for you to drag and drop because it will um find one or add one on its own if needed here the animator is just the animator for the uh, character so we just drag and drop this if they are missing and here as you can see i'm going to show you that in game um very very handy we have the option to uh, disable and enable the uh, camera as we wish so here for example if i move here and i turn off the camera as you can see our controller is still going to work i can still move and click extra but the camera is not going to follow anymore unless I turn it back on. So this could be really useful actually if you're only interested in the movement part of my controller and that you want to use your own camera code or if you're only interested in the camera and not the movement. Now I turned off the movement. As you can see, I cannot move anymore. So yeah, pretty uh, useful. Now the next setting in the camera section is init camera. This one is very, um, very important. 
because it's either you turn it off and drag and drop a camera in the scene. So this will be for games where the player is not spawned. It's like a prefab in the scene. But if um, the prefab is, you know, spawned at runtime, you cannot have a direct reference to a camera, right? So in this case, we'll want to use the init camera option. And in this case, we'll just type the name of the camera game object. As you can see here, main camera. Make sure it is the exact name. It's um, cap sensitive. So yeah, just make sure uh, you write it exactly here. Now, the position uh, vector three here will um, define the offset of the camera. So um, here, for example, we say that by default, we are 10 uh, meters above the character and this much uh, on the Z axis. And the rotation, for example, if I set it to um, 90 and go in game now, you can see that, well, it is 90. So uh, in my case, I really like 45 for this controller um, because I think it looks nice. But of course, you have full freedom over that. Now here we have the minimum height and minimum uh, maximum height settings. So uh, this is how far and how close you can zoom. So for example, I could make it 1 and um, 40. And we will see in games that uh, we can now go a lot closer and a lot further. We also have control over the zoom speed and the zoom power. So if I take this now to 15, you can see that every time I zoom, it is a lot more distance covered. If I set it to 1, you see that it's way slower. So I'm going to put it back to uh, 5 and same for the zoom speed. Um, as you can see, it's you know how smooth you want it to be. Uh, in this case, we can have 1, but in this case, it's really, really slow, right? Um, so I thought that 15 was usually a good number for that. Um, mean vertical and max vertical you usually won't have really to tweak it but it's mostly to make sure that the character is um, at the center of your screen the rotation speed is of course how quick the camera is rotating when um, using the rotation key so as you can see right now very slow and if I put it back to uh, 150 it is a lot faster so once again you have really full control over those things and it takes a second to change concerning the movement um, so here's the distance uh, threshold is how far away does it has to be from your click. So the, the center of this like ground marker um, for the character to decide, okay, I'm done here. Because if you set it to exactly zero, in some cases, it might actually get stuck and not really reach ever this point, right? So you need some kind of threshold. Uh, I made sure that the default values worked really well um, for this controller. So you're free to tweak them, but most of them are fine by default. Now the max raycast distance, uh, this could be really high, honestly. Uh, I think 100 is more than enough. But uh, in the case that your camera is actually further than 100 from the ground, then you might want to increase that. The minimum path distance, if I set it to a bigger value now, you can see that for now I'm clicking uh, close to my character and it's not working, it's not letting me. And the reason for that is because uh, of the minimum path. So what I did here, is 0 0.5 and the reason for that is because we don't want our character to move if we are clicking pretty much on top of itself right so it's not going to do some weird movement you can of course set it to zero uh, if you want and in this case you see that i can just move anywhere i click now invalid path threshold so this is when um clicking on the hall for example if i click to one if i set this to one my bad now you see that when I click on the hole, it's not finding a new path because this value here defines how far away the point we click at should be from a uh, nav mesh. And the reason I set a value for that is because from the Unity documentation, it's actually showing, uh, saying that this is an expensive way uh, or like something expensive in terms of performance. So the lower value, the better. I find that five is fine, but if you go to a bigger value, it can, you know, uh, probably get a bit more expensive at least for one character it shouldn't be an issue but if you use this for npcs and it's going to be um, a lot more impactful for sure now uh, the next thing is about the keys so like the input settings so here as you can see you can very easily um, set the default keys for the movement so this one is for clicking and holding for stand key so in this case when you stand like this and um the character is looking at the cursor as well as the rotate right and left uh, for the camera. 
Now you can set to any keys you want, but those fields are also very easy for you to change in the code. If you had your own system, for example, where you wanted your um, player to save their own keys, you know, because maybe they want to change those keys, then you could really easily uh, initialize them on start or whatever. So here can hold move key. So if I turn this off, I can no longer hold the move key to go there. I can only click. Now concerning the uh, move hold interval is how quick uh, when holding the key will it you know uh, set a new destination. So if I set this to zero, for example, as you can see, well, literally every single frame um, that it's allowed to is going to uh, try a new destination. So it's not really um, ideal. But uh, yeah, in my case, I set it to 0.1 and you can see that it's much cleaner and the movement is really not affected by that. Uh, it still feels great. And uh, as you can see here, I'm turning on and off always show. So if this is off uh, the ground indicator, so the green or orange when the path is not valid, uh, is only going to show on click. If you turn this on, it is every time uh, a new destination is set. So in this case, when holding, it's also showing. The stand key, as I said, very easy to change. Uh, look at cursor is, um, if I'm standing right now, I mean, we can't really see it anyway, but right now I'm holding the uh, space key. And if this is off, the character is not going to look at the cursor. But if it is now, as you can see, um, it rotates to the cursor. Now, can rotate camera. If this is off, then by pressing the camera rotation key, it's not going to rotate anymore. But if it's on, of course, we can then use those keys. And the last part of the inspector is uh, input feedback. And like I said, always show this is to always uh, trigger the feedback. And um, here we have two prefab fields. The first one is valid, so uh, the green one. And the second one is the orange one when the path was not valid. So these prefab are very easy for you to replace. You just drag and drop here. Uh, in this case, it is a particle system, but it could be an animated mesh. It could be pretty much anything you want. And here you have the choice about the position. So if I set this to two, for example, as you can see, it is now not accurate anymore because it's actually in the air. Uh, but in this case, I just set it to 0.1 so that it's not completely in the ground and it just looks a bit better. You can also offset it if you want or whatever. Of course, it's not really what I would do, but uh, if you find a use for this, why not? Prefab duration, so how long the prefab is going to stay in the scene. But in this case, anyways, this particle effect is not lasting um, a long time anyway, so two seconds is fine. And here, same as prefab, you have audio field. So uh, you could have a sound playing when you have a valid path and another sound playing when you have a non-valid path. Or it could, of course, be the same one uh, if you drag and drop the same one here. So that's pretty much all for the... Um, character inspector and all the settings you have available. And as you can see below this, we have, of course, an animator, uh, which is provided for you um, in this asset. It's very simple. It's just moving, standing, and stunt, and idle animation. Uh, you can, of course, expand on it, add your combat animation or whatever with your own systems. Then we have a capsule collider, and we have a nav mesh agent uh, with a few custom values here, because I found that this was working really well for uh, me. But you can, of course, tweak those and it will highly affect the way your character um, move around. For example, if I set this to 50 and acceleration to 10, you can see that now, literally, it's not even going to rotate much. Uh, maybe 150. Now it rotates, but you see it's kind of sliding on the ground. So I don't really like that. That's why I set a very high angular speed and also a high acceleration because this is what's going to affect um, the uh, responsiveness of the controller. So initially it was 100. As you can see, it's kind of like nicely and smooth, but you can set it maybe to 1000, for example, and see. And now you see that it's really, really uh, responsive. So you may prefer that and it's completely fine. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you have any question, any suggestion to add to this controller in the future, let me know in the comment or on the Discord. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.